What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. So, over the weekend, this is pretty funny. Uh, we had, of course, Ash catch him win his first championship. So people are saying he's a Pokemon master now and everything. It, it was one of the strangest things to see kind of trend on Twitter. And it kind of caught me off guard why it was such a big deal at first. Because even places like CNN were talking about it and everything. And then it hit me. He's been trying to win this for 20 years. One of the slowest burns I've ever seen in like a storyline at all. So... I guess, I guess it all makes sense, you know, and then we'll see where the anime goes from there. But it was just an interesting thing to see really pop up and take over the internet uh, all through Sunday. But interesting stuff there. But today, though, we have a bunch of stuff to go over. Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting a mode added to it that I think a lot of the traditional people who, are, who have played the older one and prefer that combat will like to hear about. Also, I've talked a bit about Sakurai, talking about uh, Goku, and completing his final mission to the late Satoru Iwata. Uh, as always, guys, enjoy these videos. Make sure to the like button, it does help out and get subscribed so you stay up to date on all of the gaming news going on in the gaming world. We're actually gonna start today with the Mega Man Zero ZX Collection. Capcom is, uh, they've been they've been fairly cheap at times, right? They've cheaped out on some things. They don't wanna do multiple cartridges in places like the US for their Legacy Collection 1 and 2. Remember, if you buy that physically, you get basically one collection on a cartridge, the other one has digital code, and most of the time, the collection that's actually on the cartridge is the smallest in file size, so they use the smallest cartridge, and that is a shame. However, however, it looks like Capcom is going to just put everything on one cartridge or one disc, because even the Xbox One or the PS4 version have multiple discs, okay, for the Legacy Collections, the X or the regular Mega Man, but no, it looks like it is just going to be one cartridge, one disc for the Mega Man Zero ZX Collection, as you're seeing here, a tweet that was put out by the Mega Man account, does talk about six games, five heroes, two series, one cartridge or disc. No additional downloads required. Thank you, Capcom, specifically for uh, preservation purposes, obviously. I mean, what do you do if the servers get shut down for the Mega Man X Collection or X Legacy Collection, the second one, that's the PS2 games? What do you do about that if that server goes down? How do you get those games? I guess it also kind of works out for things like LA Noir, just as an example, on the Switch, where you have to download a good chunk of the game just to play it. The PS4 and the Xbox One games that come out have online patches, but for the most part, the game will still start up and play. You just have to get patches that generally make the game play it more playable because they have bugs and stuff they have to work out. Either way though, uh, good to hear that we're getting everything on one cartridge or one disc for the Mega Man Zero ZX collection. Also, this was some pretty cool retro gaming news. Here's a tweet that got put out and it looks like a an Xbox dev kit has been found and it had an unreleased original Xbox game. This was from Jordan Beatty and they talk about a couple of different things on this development kit, including levels it seems or files from Phantom Dust that weren't released and then what appears to be what rebellious bullets and that is an unreleased game because I hadn't heard of that at all and at this time people are talking about getting those things dumped whether it's the files for phantom dust or uh the different games that are on there it seems like right now the rebellious bullet game is the one that that they've been able to find and talk about but people are really looking forward to getting that dumped and I guess put online because that's an original Xbox games that never made it out of development just stuck on this dev kit it's really cool to see these kind of things happen because you never know what's going to be on a development kit when you buy it or get it like from like an auction that's been stored away for a while. A lot of times you'll find these really cool things and it looks like I saw MVG in the in the tweet thread there on Twitter trying to help out and everything. So I think this is going to be dumped and you might see it pop up online or you might see some videos talking about it, but pretty cool to see an old game that didn't come out kind of get unearthed. Also, if you're one of the dozen people who use the Discord Nitro game library. It's actually shutting down in October. October 15th is going to be the last day you'll be able to uh, play any of the games on that subscription service. And if you've never heard of that before, don't worry, neither have I. It's, it's a subscription service that was going along with Discord that you would get to play games monthly and everything on it seemed. And it, they're actually shutting that down for lack of use, which doesn't really surprise me since, again, I hadn't heard of it and it seemed like no one had really heard of it before. So they probably didn't advertise it very well, but what can you do? I know Discord has also worked on like selling stuff through their, like a, like a storefront and everything. Uh, again, not the most advertising there either, but 
a lot of people didn't even know they had a subscription service and they're shutting it down because hey, no one really knew they had it. And guys, some of the quick news out of the way, let's get in the bigger stuff. Let's let's talk about Sakurai and Goku. Yeah, because he, he shot down Goku completely as a possible character for the series. And look, it, Goku's been like a meme for the series for a while now to be added into Smash because, I mean, to be honest, he would be a really cool character to have in there. But Sakurai has other plans. I think a lot of it has to do with Goku, one, not originating in a, in a video game. Obviously, you know, he's, he's been parts of, uh, what, a manga and, and anime and everything ahead of video games. Although they're not that far apart if you really look at some of the Famicom games. But still, Goku technically didn't start up in a video game. You also have all kinds of licensing issues and everything. But this is what he had to say, and it was translated on Twitter, saying, I get all these kinds of questions from abroad, like, where's my be belief? Iron Man or where is my beloved Goku? I guess that's beloved Iron Man, beloved Goku. However, basically Smash will only have content from video games in it. And again, people, I've seen some people argue that Goku is in a video game and yeah, to a degree he is, right? I mean, he's part of all kinds of video games at this point, but again, he didn't start in a video game. And then you also have all types, all kinds of rights and, and licensing issues and stuff. I mean, at one point, remember Dragon Ball Fighters wasn't gonna be in several different tournaments. They were getting pulled because there were all types of different, uh, different, essentially companies holding on to the rights for Goku and Dragon Ball Z and all of this stuff. It was all over the place. Bandai wasn't a part of it, but then they were. It was, it was a strange situation. I feel like Sakurai doesn't want to have to deal with all that going forward because let's say this game continues to get ported to different systems. Like we're kind of thinking this could be the last Smash Bros game and they just port it over. Uh, I don't know if that would be easy to work with like someone like Goku who's going to show up on, you know, TV shows going forward with Dragon Ball Super continuing, more movies and everything. Uh, there might be some licensing and rights that kind of get in the way. And Sakurai has a pretty clear cut vision, I think, for Smash. But keep in mind, that doesn't mean that characters, other fan favorite characters like uh, with Chrono and Sora, and I've even seen like Isaac, I, I think, uh, pop up at different times. So yeah, I, I think we're I think we're in good shape for some of the more, I think, possible characters. Goku just isn't one of them, it seems. Also, while Sakurai was uh, accepting the award at TGS, Tokyo Game Show, the Grand Award, he kind of let everyone in on what was a very, I think, a personal message uh, something that meant a lot to him, and it really, I think, explains why Smash Bros. Ultimate is as ambitious and large as it is, having all of these characters, everyone come back, and it did kind of work out to a lot of people thinking, wow, is this the last Smash Bros.? There's a lot of stuff going into this. Well, this is what he had to say while he was accepting the award at TGS. I'm sorry for bringing up this personal story at a time like this, but making Smash Bros. on the Switch was the last mission the late Satoru Iwata gave me, I've put all my uh, all into the game and with more DLC, I'll continue to work hard. And that's from uh, Push Dustin who went ahead and translated that for us from TGS as Sakurai was delivering that message. And this was a big, this is a big deal to Sakurai, obviously, right? Him and, uh, him and Mr. Awada were very, very close. Uh, and it makes sense that he would put this much effort and, and work into this game if this was indeed the last mission, as he's saying, that was given to him from Awada saying, hey, let's let's make a good Smash Bros game to follow up to put on the Switch that we're planning and we've been planning for a while because I had this idea and we're finally gonna have it come to fruition. And of course, here comes Sakurai saying, well, I already work really hard on these games. And then Owada has passed on, right? And now Sakurai added, you know, talks about his funeral, had a very somber Famitsu uh, column that's generally pretty happy and everything when he talked about Mr. Owada. It, it's very clear that this game means a lot to Sakurai. So I get why it's like this. I get why there's so many characters. I get why there's more DLC coming. I get why he's putting so much time. Like you look at characters like Banjo and there's so many details to that character and you know Sakurai is, is just so meticulous with it. So it really makes sense when you think about it this way with the amount of honor that, that he has for Awada and everything. Uh, big deal there for Sakurai. Great to see getting the award at TGS, the big grand award. And uh, I mean, we have more DLC coming and I have a strong feeling Sakurai has some interesting stuff up his sleeve to keep this game going. Next up, let's talk about Mega Man. I'm excited that we could possibly be getting a new Mega Man announced soonish, I'm thinking. Now, keep in mind, we had Mega Man 11 announced in December of 2017 and then it was coming out 
the following year, right? Uh, 2018 when we got it. And it turned out pretty good. I liked Mega Man 11 and I started to think, okay, it's time for Mega Man X9, right? Well, we had a bit of an inter interview with 4Gamer from the series producer for Mega Man talking about what's going on with the next one. Where is it? When are we gonna see it? Is it even in development like we figured it is, as we had to say. There are a lot of titles I personally want to work on, but to tell the truth, the next game to be developed has already been decided on. I just like to keep the specific details hidden for the moment. Please wait until we can make an announcement. Still, I think that there's no such thing as a spinoff in the Mega Man series. Every saga is a main series on its own. When speaking of Mega Man, there will always be people who think of X, as well as people who think of e, uh, EXE, interesting. And I think uh, that's why each one's concept of what Mega Man is changes depending on the generation. For that reason, we don't want to deny any series of its future. So here's the deal. It appears that the next Mega Man game is already in development and I have a feeling it could also be announced in December for uh, a 2020 release. So keep that in mind. They could do the same thing, do their own stream all about Mega Man, right? Like they did before. Maybe they have uh, some some more looks at the Mega Man Zero ZX collection. Because keep in mind, a lot of times when we get a collection, we also get a new game kind of alongside it. Remember, we, we saw the Legacy Collection, uh, the X Collection get announced, and then here comes Mega Man 11 now. So I'm thinking, okay, Here's Mega Man Zero ZX Collection. Do we then get Mega Man X9 or could it possibly be Mega Man 12? Maybe that helped them turn around pretty quickly and get that one out, use the same engine, different bosses and everything. Also possible, but I think I would like to see Mega Man X9. Let's get that out there. Let's see how it does. And I'm curious what art style they would go with, if it would be different or the same, but I'm kind of feeling December, so let's look towards that. Next up, let's talk about Borderlands 3. I've actually started it now after finishing Astral Chain and a couple hours in, and I'm enjoying it. I'm playing on the Xbox One X, but it seems that PC users in particular are not having a great time with this game so far. Of course, it's an Epic Game Store exclusive, and it has some interesting issues with things like DRM that people aren't too sure about. There have even been allegations of a keylogger being thrown around, although, I need to see a bit more proof about that one before we dive into it, but it's pretty clear that the Denuvo DRM that's working with it is doing some interesting stuff in the background. It's uploading data, it appears, but it's been falsely reported at times that it's two megabytes when it's really two megabits, which is not nearly as much data getting uploaded. But keep in mind, it does appear that there is some communication going on in the background, which I think has more to do with just Denuvo. But what's interesting about this situation, because it's an Epic Game Store exclusive, there's nowhere to really talk about it. Out, like you, you can't do anything. There's no bo message boards on the Epic Game Store. There's no user reviews, ratings, none of that. So people are now scattering and going all over the place. People have actually talked about the issues of Borderlands 3 on, believe it or not, the Borderlands 2 Steam pages. I'm, I'm not kidding. People have had to take to Steam Borderlands 2 to talk about the issues of Borderlands 3. Review bombing has now taken place on Metacritic with user scores because, again, where else do you really put your grievances out there for reviews? And then, of course, the Borderlands 3 message message board itself has been just hit really hard, even like general discussion with just issues about performance, DRM, and all kinds of bugs and glitches with the PC version. It appears that the game struggles badly for some reason, even with the most powerful 11, $1,200 cards, video cards, still has an issue. I think it might have to do with that de novo DRM because we've seen those be removed and then everything kind of clear up. But I think the biggest issue here is it's all kind of working out to a degree for 2K and, and uh, Gearbox because there's nowhere centralized for everyone to really talk about this stuff, specifically next to the product. And it feels very, very planned when it comes to that and them accepting the six month exclusivity with Epic Games. So I don't know if we'll ever, at, to be honest at this point, get user reviews on the Epic Game Store because it seems like developers and publishers Kind of like it that way. And our last bit of news is talk about Final Fantasy VII Remake because we did get a new mode announced at TGS. It looks like it is going to have a more classic system, which is good for people who were concerned that it would feel more like an action-based game. It does appear that it's going to kind of turn it into a turn-based style game. Let's actually go to the tweets here so we can kind of describe what's happening. Uh, this was put out by the official Twitter account that you can see there. In the original Final Fantasy VII, you would wait around until the ATB uh, gauge fills up and then select a move to initiate your attack. With classic mode and Final Fantasy VII Remake, the team have cre recreated the same style of play and they do talk about how this is going to work. In standard mode, the ATB gauge fills up by repeatedly attacking your enemy, but in classic mode, this aspect of gameplay is handled automatically, the player does not need to do anything, and the character fights automatically charging up their ATB gauge. So what's going to basically happen is here is you can either 
like actually participate in the, the standard weaker attacks that fill up your gauge to where you actually hit them really hard with all types of spells and heavy hits, or you just sit back, watch them, I assume, attack on their own and fill that gauge up. It almost feels like the classic mode would be better to save your the button presses on your controller that you're just gonna be mashing, it almost feels. However, if they incorporate some smaller combos and stuff into it and some more controls, maybe that would be better to go manually so you can control it that way. I'm gonna have to see it when it comes out just to kind of get an idea which mode is better to play, specifically for traditionalists. But I do like the choice here. I like the idea of adding that to just to appease the people who want to play kind of old school Final Fantasy VII, but also have the option of trying this newer battle system that to be honest, I think looks pretty good. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This one is from uh, uh, Nintega94 saying, here's hoping that Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is good enough to win game of the year. Maybe with the loot box bill in order, EA is finally starting to learn a lesson. Uh, they're not. They want to talk, apparently talk things out with the UK government to, to make sure everything's okay with their loot boxes in FIFA. Uh, here's the thing about Fallen Order. They've told us no microtransactions, no loot box or anything like that. So if they put them in, that's gonna look really, really bad. And uh, I hope they don't, I hope they leave it out. Just just leave one, EA, just just one, please. Look what you did with Apex Legends, just, just leave this one. That one's at least free to play. This is a full $60 game, just leave it. Actually have a good game put out there that people critically acclaim because it's looking pretty good. Maybe win a Game of the Year award, possibly and move on to FIFA, do, do that again next year because you seem locked in with that as it is. If they add loot boxes though, man, that's gonna be an interesting PR nightmare that happens because uh, people remember what they said and if they show up, well, they won't let them forget they said it. And ladies, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, guys. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talk about, whether it's Sakurai, Smash Bros, and the late Satoru Awada, as Sakurai appears to be, I think, fulfilling his mission and making an awesome game that Mr. Awada would be proud of. And it doesn't look like Sakurai's done yet, but let me know what you think about that. And Goku, of course, not being in Smash, apparently, because that, that was an interesting conversation to see take place online. And then also, what about Final Fantasy VII Remake with the traditional traditional type classic battle system. Do you like that idea? You're just gonna try the new system just to see how it all plays out. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.